So, today we will continue the same discussion about seismic hazard assessment. In last lecture, we uh, have discussed the DSHA deterministic seismic hazard assessment already. So, in that we discussed that how we can predict the PGA or any ground motion parameter of future earthquake through DSHA and in that all you need to know is the maximum magnitude which can occur uh, from the most contributing fault or seismic source uh, at your particular site and then the distance between that source and site. right? And then using these two numbers you go to uh, any available ground motion prediction equation which will give you directly the ground motion parameter at your site. right? So, the summary is this one let me just quickly go through that if you have this site and three seismic sources 1, 2 and 3 these ones are uh, the potential candidates which can govern the seismicity or hazard at your site. right? So, you consider them all three, but uh, one by one not together. right? And then you have to find the maximum magnitude which each source can produce in future. right? And obviously, that information will come from the analysis of past data. So, actual process is that you gather as much data of historical seismicity as possible of the same area. right? For example, for this seismic source 1, you will identify all earthquake, past earthquake which that source have already produced. So, they, their epicenter can be marked in a map which is called historical seismicity map. And then from that data you come up with the most likely maximum number which that particular fault or seismic source can produce in future. right? So, once you know that m, then the distance between source and site r is can be calculated. So, this m r pair can be the main input in GMP. right? So, ground motion prediction equation is an equation which takes this m and r as an input and give you the hazard parameter, hazard parameter of at your site that can be PGA, that can be spectral acceleration at any time period. right? Spectral acceleration can be also an, a hazard parameter, but obviously we have to uh, you, we have to tell that at what time period uh, that spectral acceleration should be associated with. So, it can be PGA, it can be SS which is spectral acceleration at 0.2 second, it can be S1 or it can be spectral acceleration at any time period, any t. right? So, if you uh, and, and the GMP actually uh, can be in the form of PGA or can also be in the form of spectral accelerations. right? So, it will predict all these parameters for you once you give magnitude and distance as an input. In this particular example which I explained in last lecture a very simple uh, GMP by Cornell et al that was used. That GMP is very simple it, sim it is simple this equation 1.22 and it is uh, simply relating m and r with the PGA value. But currently very detailed GMPs are available, uh, which also take the faulting mechanism as an input, which also takes the site class as an input, the soil on which the, uh, the recording station or your site is located, the class, the quality of soil. GMP will take that as an input. Similarly, uh, same GMP have different uh, you can say hazard parameters in it. The coefficients for example, these numbers constant numbers will be different for different uh, hazard parameters. So, these numbers are for PGA predicting PGA, but if I write this GMP or any other GMP in the form of spectral acceleration then these coefficients will be different. right? So, currently the detailed GMPs do not look like this simple, 
they are very long equations which take the effect of many controlling parameters including faulting mechanism including the uh, the site class and then the coefficients are general they will be different for predicting different hazard parameter so the details uh, tables of coefficients also come with that equation that if you want to apply that equation to predict pga this is the set of coefficients you should put that in the equation but for spectral acceleration at 0.1 second different set of equation 0.2 second different set of equation so all up till like 5 second or 6 second which means that if you apply that gmp for all spectral accelerations one by one for the same site you can plot the response spectrum of the future earthquake for your site using dsha right same thing you can also do for uh, psha which i'll introduce today right so you may not only predict pga value at your site you may also predict the whole spectrum of future earthquake uh, using dsha process because the gmp available will be allow, will be allowing you to predict any hazard parameter it will be allowing you to predict the spectral acceleration at all time periods including the two standard uh, 0.2 second and 1 second right so it means that uh, this example is just one small subset of the detailed dsha process in dsha you have a more detailed uh, analysis before finalizing the input that is the maximum magnitude and source to site distance and then in terms of outputs also you may also predict pga you may also predict the whole spectral acceleration versus time period curve for your site and you may also in, and obviously ss and s1 will be including that that curve so if you can perform this process for different sites you can also make a pga map using dsha or ss map using dsha or s1 map using dsha right so dsha is limited in this idea that it considers the contribution of each source separately at the site hazard contribution separately and then you pick the maximum number right so it doesn't take uh, into account the relative occurrences or activity rates of different earthquake uh, different sources if source 1 is more frequently producing earthquake in past and source 3 is less frequently producing earthquakes in past then dsha will not take care of this this relative frequency rates or rates of occurrences of past earthquakes it will simply treat source 1 separately and source 3 separately and whichever is producing maximum pga at your site you will use that pga as a result of dsha so when when you perform dsha for whole study area it is possible that at a particular site this one this source 3 start governing the number and at this particular site source 1 start governing the number right and it at this site may be source 2 so you take one source at a time whichever is governing and fix the pga number or ss or s1 number whatever hazard parameter at that location and then finally you make a map right so you do not account for the the activity rates of different sources this is something which you can do using psha right probabilistic seismic hazard assessment so let's uh, start its basic introduction so this as i have said it takes into account the seismic potential of the seismic sources right how frequently that magnitude 7 or 6 is being produced right the random nature of earthquake occurrences that they occur in history randomly they don't follow any pattern the random nature of the ground motion produced by these earthquakes the damage potential of these ground uh, motions and the uncertainties involved at all levels of this process right all of these uh, things are accounted in psha but they uh, cannot be accounted in dsha process 
So, prior to the widespread of PSHA, uh, we used to have this deterministic method in which we go only for a single earthquake scenario. But in PSHA, we will not go for any specific scenario, any specific magnitude and any specific distance. We will consider all magnitudes, we will consider all distances, all seismic sources and then we relatively their relative rates of occurrences will be accounted and then we finally using uh, by integrating all of those things we finally come up with the uh, hazard parameter at our site that is supposed to be more realistic right 